Hi there, welcome to this introductory video to Yuhi's Zebra semi-modular synth. This initial video will be going over the main 10 sections of the synthesizer, giving you a brief overview of what those sections do. And later on in the series, we shall go through each section independently in a lot more detail. But for the time being, we're just going to give an overview of the complete synth, then we shall get into a little bit more depth. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what it looks like, this is Yuhi's Zebra Synth 2.5, as you can see here. Now it's got three main sections up the top here. You've got your performance, your synthesis, and your patch section. And then you have some other sections down here, which are a bit more specific, apart from obviously the global one. What that basically means is that it affects everything in the sound. So we'll just start with the more familiar parts of the synth. Basically, these are parts that you'd find in most synths. And then we'll move on. So the first part is patches. Now, there's literally, you can get thousands of patches for it. It comes with everything you can see here, from local to number nine. Now, these um, patches are from basic bass sounds all the way through to arpeggiated, percussive sounds, synthesis sounds, pads, the lot. But we're not going to get into that too much at the moment. Okay, I'll let you hear one of these patches. Let's just find an arpeggiated patch. Okay, a loop will do, and that one there will do. Okay, so that's just a couple of patches from the initial patches that come with the synthesizer. Okay, so I'll just briefly explain what we have here. This side is your patch selection. So you have all your patches down here. You can select them. And this side shows you the patches that are in each selection that you make here. So for instance, that's a bank of basic. Um, it's called basic here, but it's bass type sounds. And that'll be lead type sounds, etc. Pretty straightforward. Same as any other synth, really. And this is really your patch selection section. So that's all we need to worry about when it comes to the patches. Um, you can you, you see the center piece here and all the other pieces down here, but don't worry about that. We're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. Okay, the next part I want to show you is the synthesis part. Now, I know it looks complicated, let me just initialize it. But don't let it scare you off. So what we've got here is the initial patch sound, or when everything is zeroed, basically. There's no effects, there's no synthesis going on, really, apart from the creation of the saw wave. But that's it. But this is where all the magic happens. This is why it's called a semi-modular synth, because in here you can add, you can take away, you can modulate. Now this section here is known as the generator panel. This is where you will find anything that generates a sound, so oscillators, noise, stuff like that, will be found here. This section here is known as the modulation panel. This is where you'll find things that modulate sound, so things like envelopes and LFOs like you can see there. We also have this midsection. Now this is where you build your synthesizer. So, for instance, let's say we have an oscillator here. Let's just make a little pattern that we can hear. Okay, so I've created a little pattern so that you can hear things happening. Okay, so it's simply just pay playing the initialized patch. Now, if I want to start manipulating this, um, these slots here can all be filled with different tools. So, for instance, if I want to add a filter, I just click on one of the slots. Obviously, I w if I want to filter this oscillator, the easiest way to do it is below. It's not the only way you can do it, but again, we'll get into that in more detail. So, I want a VCF1, voltage control filter, and there you go. 
There's my filter. So if I bring the cut off down, nothing. Okay, so as you can see, we just add things here. So if I wanted to add something like some noise. And again, with each thing that you add, with each generator and modulation uh, device, you've got loads of different options. So for here, you can see it says single, but we can change it to dual, quad, or even 11 oscillators. Let me just turn these off and let you hear what that sounds like. And we have other um, processes that we can put in place here, things like hard sync, but I'm not going to get into that at the moment. We'll get into that when we actually look at oscillators and stuff. And as you can see there, they just double. You just click on them to turn them off. Double click to turn them back on again. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Now the modulators are, can be assigned to these very easily. As you can see here, there's three little dots in some of these. That means we've got two here. This one here is assigned to the cutoff. This one here to the resonance. So now if I want to use the LFO to control the cutoff frequency, I just click on here. As you can see, it's called LFO1. So I just come over here, look for LFO1. There it is. So LFO1 will now control the cutoff frequency when I make it a positive or a negative number. And then I can change the settings over here as well. Again, we'll get into it in more detail in a future video. And we can also modulate all of these things, but we'll leave that for now. Okay, the next part I was going to show you was the performance, but we'll leave that until later on, simply because um, I want to explain the XY controls a little bit in a future uh, further on in this video. But basically this is for things like, so you can control things on the X and Y axis. So if you've got like a ribbon controller or like something like a chaos pad, something like that, these can be assigned to that so that you can have real hands-on. And I believe you can also use things like iPads and stuff. Okay, um, the next thing we're going to look at is the global section. Basically what we have here is lots of different parameters that manipulate the sound globally. What that means is, if I turn on something down here, it will affect the complete sound. It won't just affect a certain, like, a, the filter or just the oscillator or just the noise or just the cutoff frequency. It will all, it will affect the sound completely. So you've got things like voice mode. So we can change it to arpeggiator mode, geophonic, legato, things like that. You can change the amount of voices that the sound is, has available to it, not necessarily use. We have the pitch bend, amounts, loads of other stuff. We also have here, this bit here that looks kind of similar to this. This is an effects modular rack, if you like. When I say modular, I mean it can be adapted and used any way you like. Modular means it's not static, so you don't have to have something in there and in there and in there. You can have whatever you like in that one, whatever you like in that one, and whatever you like in that one. But this is specifically to do with effects. So if I click on that, you'll see we've got these different effects, modulation effects, EQ, more filters, some reverb. So if I put delay one in here, delay one will now affect the sound. Obviously not at the moment because we haven't done anything to the delay. So I could turn up the mix perhaps. And as you can hear, the delay is now affecting the sound. And we can control it in all kinds of different ways, but we'll get into that later. So this is the global section. Everything that happens in here will affect the sound completely. So if I go in here and add a reverb as well, we'll see the reverb up here. Nice. So as you can see, just in this section alone, we have loads and loads of choices. 
The next section I want you to, wanted to show you was the oscillator 1, 2, 3 and 4. As you can see, they're all the same. Yeah, they're all exactly the same. And the reason there's four of them is because if you come up here and click, it gives you up to oscillator 4. You can have four oscillators. And remember, each one of those oscillators can have 11 waves. So it's quite crazy. This is known as wavetable synthesis. So if I just turn the filter off and go back and turn those effects off. So, okay, I've just put it back to that. Now, if we go to oscillator one, we can now shape this. So if I go insert point, I'm right clicking to do that. So I can now make a wave table or a wave. You can draw whatever you like in there. And then if I was to come to this last one here, what you can actually do, just before I show you that, you can run... Now, if I come to the last one and I draw a different wave, let's draw a square wave. Okay, it sounds like we've still got some modulation going on. Or is it because it's on 11? I'll just put it back to single. Okay, it's not the best square wave in the world, but of course I've just drawn it in. But what I wanted to show you is now we have a square wave here almost, and then we have that squiggly wave that we can, it's almost like a sawtooth, but it's obviously not. Now if I come up here and right click on this one and select morph, it will morph from this wave to that wave, and that's your wavetable synthesis. So if I right click morph, watch what happens. As you can see, there's a transition from there to there. It just slowly, but now what you could do is modulate this, between all the different waveforms. And you can have that automated by LFOs or envelopes, whatever you like. Again, we'll get into it in more detail later. And each oscillator section is the same. We also have other parameters here that I'm not going to get into because they, they are quite... They're not difficult to understand, but they can be quite in-depth. So we'll leave that till leave, uh, the video on oscillators. So you've got four of those. So you can see the power straight away. It's quite impressive. Just going to initialize the patch again. So the next section I want to show you briefly is the FMO or the FM oscillator, which is frequency modulation. Now there's lots and stuff, lots of stuff here. Again, it looks kind of complicated, but it's not really that complicated. But I'm going to leave this for another video, just so that you know it's there. This is a frequency modulation oscillator and its parameters, and of course the the, the frequency modulation oscillator can be added here. Again, you've got four of them, but it kind of work a little bit differently from the other oscillators. So we'll get into that later. We have this next section, MSEG, or the Multi-Stage Envelope Generator. This is where you can draw your own envelopes and affect the sound in a specific way. So we can do stuff like this. So you can create things like specific patterns. You can... Um, I think there's even some presets. Okay, they don't seem to be there at the moment. But um, in another video, when we concentrate on this, I'll show you how to install, create, save your own multi-stage envelope generators. But you can create things like arpeggiators, drum patterns, all kinds of stuff with this. It's fantastic. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the synth. Okay, the next section is the XY control. Now, this is why I left this performance bit earlier on. So what we've got here is, this is where we assign what's on the X-axis, and what's on the y-axis. So for instance, it says none there, we can go to oscillator one, we can go to tuning. Okay, you can hear the, the, the tuning being affected. Or the pitch. And these parts here are, how, uh, are the depth, basically, of how much the modulation takes place. And as you can see, that's the x-axis. Come over here. Let's select volume. So 
So as you can see, x-axis, y-axis, and if you look closely down here, you see a little white line appear. That's showing you exactly where. It's, 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 again, it's to do with the depth parameter again. But I'll get into more depth in this in the actual video that's uh, regarding this, because this, this is awesome, this section. And especially if you've got a ribbon controller or something like a chaos pad, you can get so creative here, it's unbelievable. And as you can see, one for each one. And look at all, there's what, two, four, six, eight parameters per axis for each section. Then we have the arpeggiator and the sequencer section. This is so in-depth and so, you can be so creative with this. And if you use this in conjunction with the multi-stage envelope generator, the patterns that you can create are pretty much second to none, I have to say. Um, but I'll just let you hear this working if I just draw in a note. Okay, the first thing we need to do actually is go to global and change it here. Remember I showed you earlier? Select the arpeggiator. So it's now playing quarter notes and it's following this. This is all very, looks very complicated, but you can have some, uh, you can be really creative with it. So if I put it on the 16s, which is something I'm probably more familiar with. So there you go, that's the arpeggiator. And this section here is the arpeggiator modulation. And this section here allows you for some unbelievably creative uh, modulation. You can just select each note, tell it if you want it up, down, whatever it is. And you would go to the synthesis patch and say we want to control the tuning. So we click on that and we look for Arp Mod. So now... And when it gets to something here that you've drawn in, something particular, it will start to modulate whatever parameter it is that you've set to be modulated. So as you can see, it's very, very in-depth. And you can be so creative with this, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, there'll be a whole video on that also. And last but not least is the matrix section. Here is where you can assign a modulation source and a target. So let me just get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so if I want to modulate, again, the tuning of oscillator one, I can put it in there. So that's the target. So I now have to use my source, so let's say LFO1. And if I press play, so that's now told that the modulation source, which is LFO1, to affect the oscillator one's tuning. But what we can also do here, if we click on this, we can also assign things like the modulation wheel on your keyboard, even breath, and of course the multi stage envelopes, the envelopes, all kinds of stuff. It just, it, it's so in-depth, and the creative possibilities are endless, really, as you can probably see. But um, I guess that's it, really. That's that's just a quick overview of Zebra. Um, I hope to see you in the future videos, and I'm sure you'll learn a lot. I will be active in the forums every day. Any questions, just let me know, and I'll be there to help you. Thanks a lot for watching.